programa patrocinado por Longines. Hello and welcome to week six of the Spanish Sunshine Tour here in Fajer de la Frontera. Well, what a great city and what a great host it has been to the 2,000 horses, 450 riders that have competed here for a prize fund of 1.3 million euros over the past six weeks. The facilities, well, top class, world renowned and the very best riders in the world are here competing. Joining us to go through the final Grand Prix is Alan Storm. Alan, what a great facility here in Spain. A great facility and what's most impressive is after six weeks and all those horses, all those rounds, all those competition, everything is still in tip top condition. Everything is as fresh as it was in the, for, for the first week. Great grounds. Now Longines are our very generous sponsors of this Invitational Grand Prix and you can see the combination. It is much bigger this week and it is much wider as well. So it's a true test of horse and rider. It sure is. Um, Javier Tenor, the Spanish course builder, his course uh, is building here today. He's combined both his uh, U-turns and his 360 degree turns that he likes so much together with a few related distance, which will definitely cause some problems. Now, apart from the facilities being top class for the horse and rider, the corporate hospitality is fantastic as well. Yes, yeah, they cater for a lot of people that ha are here for a long time. So, for the staff, for the people, for the owner, for the riders, everybody is catered for to the best. Well, as we mentioned, Longines are a very generous sponsor. 35,000 plus going to the winner. And you can see perfect conditions here. 20 degrees uh, this afternoon for the Grand Prix. So perfect conditions for both horse and rider. Yes, there's a good breeze. It's a, it's a strongish breeze, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very nice, very pleasant, very pleasant for the horses. And um, it's been an incredible six weeks where there has been virtually no rain. 81 seconds is the time allowed. There's 13 obstacles and 16 jumping efforts. But we want to get as many clears as possible to come back to a second round, which will be against the clock. Now, what a good one to start us off in our coverage of this Grand Prix. We go to Sweden. This is Fredrik Jonsson. He goes with the brilliant cold play. This is an 11-year-old gelding by Contendro. This is a really special combination. Very special combination. They were they were the making and they were the, the highlight of uh, the World Equestrian Games last year. They were uh, a new a new member of the Swedish team. Did extremely well and helped Sweden to get a silver medal. There was a lot of talk and there was a lot of calling for the horse, but he kept the horse and uh, he's starting again and he's hoping again. He has to work again to get back into the team because the Swedish have a fantastic team with people like. Um, Henrik Eckermann and um, Peter Frederiksson. It's not an easy team to get into, and uh, this for him, this is the way that uh, he wants to show that he's there and very much there. Now, you start off quite big on this course. Even the first fence stands at 1 meter 50. That particular vertical stands 1 meter 60. Uh, the verticals are quite tall on this course. The verticals are tall, and there you see he has uh, this, this turn where. Really, the, the, the biggest uh, problem with those turns that uh, Javier likes very much is that you have to decide the course that you're taking and you have to make sure that it's pretty close to what the course builder decided it should be so that you're not wasting too much time around the corner. They did shorten the time after the start. In the beginning, it was 84. They brought it down to 81. And I think he has it just right. And, and it's the time is tight. It's been one or two that have had time falls but it, it is but the horse is absolutely jumping out of his skin here and he's, he's having a beautiful round you'd expect that from this combination yes absolutely there's a couple of horses there's a couple of olympic horses a couple of horses world the question games there's a couple of uh, strong nations cup horses in this this is a strong class well, a cracking round there from Coldplay and he'll uh, join the, our other competitors that are coming back for the second round, which will be against the clock. Look forward to seeing that one. That's right. So far, we've, uh, we've two Irish uh, young riders uh, that are clear already, Peter Maloney and Susan Fitzpatrick. Uh, we've got a Brazilian in uh, Matos Riba. Uh, we've got a, a Swiss uh, that's clear as well and uh, we've got Christopher Fraser for, for the UK that's clear so we've already got uh, a good feel and there's another Irishman uh, Anthony Condon Anthony Condon well uh, what a couple of seasons he's having he goes with SFS Aristo this is a 13 year old stallion by Arco owned by John and Lisa Hales and bred by them I think 
bred by them as well. And uh, he looks like Arkel. He does, and uh, there's a lot in his jump that would remind him of him. Um, Anthony hasn't been here for the six weeks. He he was in Villamora where he actually jumped extremely well as well, and then he's taken the, the last two weeks here and um, doing extremely well, and, and the horse is jumping, has been jumping well when here. Okay, we'll just go around the course. We start off there at a 1 meter 50 vertical, then we come to an Oxer, which is a 150 and 150 wide, so it's pretty right. square. It, yes, it's a, it's commit to seven strides, it's the only way to do it, and uh, that's uh, th there's no choice really there. There's a triple bar, uh, and then you have a very complicated line. Uh, to get in a straight approach to the combination, you have to be patient before turning to the combination, and then it's like on an S-bend. You have to turn left to go and, and take this com uh, related distance. Again, the vertical is a little bit of a danger. It's an open big track, and some horses tend to be a little bit flat. Here, an auction, again, where you have to decide the line you're taking, which can get people to go. Here, here we have the, the water jump now. The water has jumped extremely well, which has made this line a little bit easier than what it walked, actually very colourful fence there uh, with the flamingos and then again a turn back, typical turn back where one could go a little bit far, far to assure this vertical then dog leg to this uh, to the last line which is a double oxer to vertical colours that some horses don't see very well or respect very well and then finishing on the, uh, the Massimoditi um, oxer and there's another clear, he's joining his cousin Yes, uh, he's clear and uh, going back for the next round. Uh, a really nice round. Made it look very easy there, Anthony Conton and SFS Aristo. Yes, and um, as I said, he, he was an, uh, a member of the team, of the Irish team for um, in Barcelona last year. And again, like everybody else, all the places are there to take and everybody is looking at the Europeans and, of course, looking at... Uh, qualifying for Tokyo so this is an important year and this is the way he's decided to start his season we go to Brazil now Pedro Junqueria Milart he goes with Prince Royal Z MFS this is a 12 year old stallion by Prince de Revel yes this is um, on on form this is uh, definitely a horse that, that should go clear um, Back end of last year, he was third in the Grand Prix in Liège, and then he, in 2017, he won the Grand Prix in Le Bol. He's been a, a member of the Brazilian team, has won some Nations Cup, so he's definitely here to to impress and to try and be qualified for the team for Brazil to go to the Pan, uh, Pan American Games. So he's still clear at this stage. He's working hard, and he uh, a lot of his horses are quite busy. Uh, this horse is this horse is a handful, and he rides it beautiful. He's a French bred horse, by Prince de Revel. Um and yes, he's busy and he's active. Do the riders like these water fences? I know there's been a lot of talk of late about trying to get water fences removed, but it's an important part of show jumping. No, I would be inclined to agree with that. I have to say, I, 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 I think. A water jump isn't um, isn't the must, and in this particular water jumps extremely well. Uh, I think in in Weg, the horse does a funny there. It's the gate. It's just at the end gate. The horse spooks a little bit and loses a little bit of time. He's going to be tight for time. Tight for time. Yeah, well, the clock does catch him, and that final line probably cost him that second. So he won't be making it back into the second run. One time penalty there for Pedro. Yeah, that that would be a bad blow uh, for him because um, this would have been very much the crescendo. He's, he's he has a, a lot of horses here. He's been he, he won a couple of classes and he's he's been producing quite a few young horses here. But to get the name on a Grand Prix, a four-star Grand Prix, especially Invitational, Longines Invitational, it's a big thing. And and one would he's competitive. This horse is competitive, so it's it's a big loss. It's a, a little bit of a loss to the class as well. Well, we go to the Netherlands now. This is Eric van der Fluten. Goes with uh, one child, 19. This is a 13-year-old mare by Casal. Yes, Eric uh, has had a great uh, 
six weeks here. Was supposed to be only staying for four weeks and then uh, go back to Europe and get ready for the his next uh, big show is going to be Mexico but he decided to stay the horse jumped wonderfully he has uh, two new horses uh, Joost again and Snow S uh, this horse he's had the whole year last year so uh, this year it's with Wunschkin he's going and this one owned by um, Marta Ortega Perez they are great supporters of the game great supporters of the game great supporters of the Van der Vleuten and um, yeah they're doing a fantastic job uh, for them of course they, they were the team that won the Global Champions League so that uh, came with a huge uh, bonus and uh, a huge prize fund There's never been as much money in the sport Alan Why has it become so successful over the past couple of seasons? Well there's, there's a lot of uh, good sponsors it attracts it, it's, a, it's a sport that fills uh, places in all around the world Hong Kong now has been a, a great and Hong Kong wasn't a place that where show jumping would have been known or where there was a great tradition in it but uh, people just love it it's a great spectacle you can follow the horses last long he's doing a great job to hear it looks like he's uh, he's going to go he's going to go clear he's uh, turned short there because this horse is a little bit of a slow slow horse so I think he's going to be okay for time so coming down now to uh, the final fence Time will be okay. Yeah, and that's a good run there. Eric van der Fluten, uh, he comes back for the next round. So this um, this gives us eight now at this stage. Um, sorry, nine uh, at this stage, uh, clear. So we see coming down the final line. Yeah, plenty of height there. This is a real championship horse yeah um, Eric uh, it's great to see him back and great to see him back in the top sport he's had a, an incredible six weeks as I said he's three horses here he's had 28 starts and 50 50 percent of the time he was in the money so it's a great, a great striking rate especially when in a lot of the case you're kind of training we go for the home side now this is Jesus Jorez Garcia goes with RP Dubreshi it's a 17-year-old stallion by Concord. Well, unfortunately, you have the first fence done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's most unfortunate. Uh, this horse, uh, Jesus, is actually local. He's, uh, he's from Andalusia. He's, uh, he's from Seville. He's very local uh, indeed. So um, it's a pity. It would have been great to, to see a... A local man? A, a local man. Unfortunately, um, I mean, Spain, uh, they've, they've had a good weekend. Um, one of their top riders, Sergio Moya, won a big class on Saturday night in Wellington. And today, this afternoon, actually, um, Edu Alvarez was third in the big uh, Hermes show in Paris uh, with Syringat. So some of their top names are, are away, but uh, unfortunately, this one is not going to make it clear. Isn't it great to see a horse at 17 years of age still competing? Okay. Do having a couple of fences down but he's still jumping yeah no I mean this horse uh, this horse has had a very good uh, a very good season doing national Grand Prix this might just be a little higher and also for Jesus he, he wouldn't uh, compete at that level uh, that often he's, he's very much of a top class uh, national rider and he's uh, competitive so he, he likes to have a go when there's a national show but he wouldn't be like some of the other riders week in week out jumping 160 classes well, he brought a big fan club with him here uh, for the Grand Prix. And, uh, he's a little bit disappointed there to have two fences on the ground. So we see there the Oxer, and he just lands a little bit short on the back pole. And uh, that was the second fence to come down. As we go to our next competitor for Great Britain now, this is Harry Charles. He goes with Lordanus Jr. This is a 12-year-old stallion by Lordanus. Yeah, um, Harry's had a... He just was away there for one week, went to, to Doha in the Global Tour, and then he came back. Has had a good show, has a good show with this, uh, with this horse, which is really coming to, to hand. It, it's a new horse, relatively new horse, but it's been competing consistently well. It's been a, a good day so far for the Charles Camp with um, his sisters and uh, 
medium Grand Prix as they called it, the horseware medium Grand Prix where they both were clear. Scarlet and Sienna. That's right. Um, also, uh, oh, there was a, a nice win in that class for Greg Broderick's student. That's right, that's right. Uh, Kerry McHill from, uh, from the States uh, won the class very well. A hot jump off, actually. It's a great win. And that vertical coming down at 1 metre 60. And they're just trying to hold it on the eight falls, get a nice round into this horse, because it's going to be a long season for them. Yeah. Again, there's uh, three of the top young uh, English riders that are here. Ty Lampard is here as well to hand to, to see their progress. And obviously they're all trying to get places into the national team. And this is a good place to judge horse and rider. Great young rider, trained by his dad, Peter Charles. So just comes home there on the eight faults inside that time. He'll be disappointed with that. He sure will. He sure will. So we're still uh, we're still on nine. Uh, we've got some very strong competitors uh, coming. Um, so I would expect a, another couple of clears. At least another couple of clears. I would say looking at the, looking down the list that uh, as uh, who's there. That middle part of the combination stands 154, almost 155. So it's quite strong. Uh, the first and the second part of the combination. Yeah, they all have to be jumped. They all have to be jumped. So we go to uh, Germany now. Marcel Marsal goes with Utopia. This is a 15-year-old mare by Concat Z. Went well here in week five. That's right. Um, Marcel won a class with uh, with another uh, another of, another horse of his here during the show. Uh, this is a this is a very nice this is a very nice mare. Um, can be a little bit difficult in the turns you you will you will notice that uh, she she very often gets disunited behind more to one side than the other she kind of starts okay and then she she switches and makes it difficult for the rider to to keep the pattern they're quite extraordinary to have the front rail of a triple bar it's a very rare thing to do but uh, fortunately what? for Marcel he managed to do it went for the long one and she was a bit cleverer yeah just had one and tipped the front pole So uh, holding it on the four faults, you can see there what Alan was mentioning about her disconnecting behind. I think there's a big jump over there. Big jump, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very frustrating for the rider. I saw that uh, this morning they were they were lunging the mare, trying to, to relax her and trying to free, free herself up and get ready and warmed up for uh, this afternoon. Pity, pity to have that uh, trip about. Definitely the last fence he would have thought he he would have this show running 25 years it'll be around for another 25 yes uh, I was talking to the organizer a little bit earlier and um, they were expecting 2,000 uh, horses next year and I think they have 100 horses that are already booked for, for next year and put down their money to, be, to make sure to get a place for next year well Marcel uh, not going to be coming back into the second round but it's been great uh, watching him here on the Spanish Sunshine Tour four faults for him and Utopia yeah, he looks um, he looks a little upset about it uh, I can understand it's uh, the last class and it's the big class and it's the big money class and uh, to jump a, a good round like this and, and have a, an unexpected fall as he has is uh, the smallest part of the course uh, the easiest uh, the, the, the least likely pole to roll we go to Belgium now. This is Dominic Hendrik. Yeah, and Dominic has his other horse, his other nine-year-old, uh, as mentioned, two very good eight-year-olds. Uh, his other horse he jumped last weekend called Cannabis. This is Coriano. Cannabis horse is the, the horse that, with whom he won the national indoor uh, championship, which is quite a feat to be winning a, a national championship with an eight-year-old. So, but today he's riding his other horse, Coriano. This is a nine-year-old, as you mentioned, by Lord Zed, and the Sar that I'm that brilliant dark goal. That's right, and uh, he he's been very busy. Henrik has. Um, he obviously rides a lot of horses, a lot of young horses. So, I was counting up today, this morning there, and I think he had 126 starts over the six weeks. So he's he's done plenty of jumping. 
Hooks not in at the combination. Really good in the middle part there. A little bit crampy behind on the final part. This horse is extremely athletic. Sometimes he, he can just get a little bit quick. Um, it was a horse we saw last week which jumped earlier called Lowyman that was ridden by Hank van der Poel. Similarly to those horses that just seem to be sometimes just getting a little bit keen. And he's riding them in a hackamore as well. Just doesn't... Oh! Looked like he was close to the tape there. Yeah. Well, that one's definitely gone. It's a lovely arena and the footing is perfect. And over the past six weeks, the conditions have been top class here. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a great credit to the way they run the show and the way they, they pick the classes, that uh, the ground is still in such wonderful nick. And uh, they have they have about six uh, grass arenas, which is huge. Well, uh, no place in the next round. Four faults there for uh, Dominic Hendrick for uh, Belgium. As we go to Holly Smith for Great Britain. Yeah, our winner of last week, last weekend. Um, riding Hearts Destiny, a horse, that, a lot of talk about the horse, a lot of talking about the horse. This horse is consistently good. Um, yeah, Hearts Destiny is a 10 year old by Heart Trob. Big rangey uh, sort. Yeah, it's huge, huge ability, incredible ability and uh, He's a big horse, but he's he's fast, as we saw last week. He's a fast horse, despite being being a big horse. Holly doing a great job. Let's enjoy this round. Now that triple bar. Really jumped out. It's a good job they the shortened the time because it would have been too generous. That's right, yeah, no, it just, it just without being impossible, it just keeps people aware that they can't use those turns just to be going for a stroll. They, they just have to keep it tight, keep it nice and tight. Because they are jumping at 375 metres per minute, so they have to be fairly on the button. Must give a great feel that horse. Yeah. The problem for 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 her and and for for Britain is to is to hold a horse like this. To keep him. That's going to be the problem. Yeah, that's going to be the problem because he's um, he's a horse. He's, he's I mean he's extremely well ridden. And well, he's a great rider. But usually horses ridden by girls. People are keen. Yeah, great jump. Great. Well, a great run there, and just inside that time allowed, so clear all the way for Holly Smith, uh, week five winner. She's uh, back for the jump off, and she'll be a real danger for all the other competitors. Yeah, she was tied to the time there, and with 81 being the allowed time, it was it was well measured. The fan club will have been a little nervous there. So we come down to our final two in this first round of the Invitational uh, Longines Grand Prix here at the Spanish Sunshine Tour. Yeah, this is um, Pedro Venice for Brazil. Pedro has won four classes, no less, uh, during this, um, this show. Uh, some of the bigger class, the 150, uh, 145, 150 classes. Uh, not with this, uh, this is uh, for pleasure, Mayor. Felicia, um, for Felicia. 14 year old mare by For Pleasure. Yeah, won the Grand Prix in uh, Oliva. Uh, he jumped in Oliva earlier there in, uh, in January and uh, won a Grand Prix there. And Pedro normally competes in the, in the global tour, but this year he's decided not to, uh, just to concentrate fully on the Pan American Games. It's really hard for riders to turn down the opportunities to jump at these big shows that have lots of big prize pots on offer, but as in, as you can 
see from Pedro, it's more important for him to be in team competitions and team sport. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. It's been a great, a great thing. And, and again, Tokyo is at the end of that line. Pan American Games is a step, stepping stone then to hopefully get. Uh, it took a very, very long line, and he's going wide here again. Um, on the Oxer, I thought he might do it just for the width of the Oxer, but he's taken again a fairly long line there. I need an extra stride come after the water as well. Oh, coming down the final line, the time uh, could be tight. Yeah, Remember, it's, no, it's, gone. it's gone. Yeah, one uh, time penalty there. Well, that's his own fault. Well. Yes, it is. He's the, he, he's, he's on the wheel, so uh, it is his own fault. But um, it's it, and it's not a horse that you normally would expect to to have a time fault. So he's he's pretty gutted with that, especially also being at the end of the class. He, he's very little excuse. I'd say it'll be a very silent way home with the wife tonight. <laughs> well. Uh... His main aim will be to get qualified for the Olympic Games, and that's what, as you mentioned, it's a build-up from here. It's a part of that uh, curve to get ready for uh, the Pan Am Games and to get that qualification for Brazil. I'd say he'll pull up that uh, excuse, but she'll tell him that it doesn't button any spar parsnips. Well, uh, we go to our next and final competitor for United States of America now. This is Laura Crouch. She goes with Zermoni. Yes, uh, the brilliant uh, ceremony, uh, second in Aachen Grand Prix one year, I think, um, by the stallion Cero. A 12-year-old mare and the, the star of the damn quick star. Well, oh. big jump there. Yes. Laura is some competitor. She's some competitor. She's uh, a lot of students here as well. Nick is here on hand. And I would say that um, there's plenty of focus. She loves grey horses. Cedric was grey, Zermoni is grey. She has a, a great connection with grey animals, by luck, I'd say. That's right. Well, I would say, uh, I, I would guess so. I, I doubt that she's the one that goes into the shop and asks for a grey <laughs> pony. I think she... She'll take the any jump, The jump, I think, is the... Uh, she's uh, still clear. Brilliant. And she will be fast. Uh, at the moment, we've just the 10 clears. And uh, there you can see how she's very economic on the turns there to, to make sure to, to have the time. Because the, the mare takes a little bit of balancing, so loses a bit of time in doing that. So coming to the final fence, and uh, yeah, cracking round there. And a great way to finish off round one of the Invitation Longines Grand Prix. We're going to have a cracking jump off. Yes. A great jump off with some uh, some great combination and uh, it's interesting we have a mix of uh, very proven horses that are just starting to starting their their year and getting their year to a good start and warming up for the for rest and there's horses that we see here that we're going to see in the European Championships that we're going to see in uh, Tokyo that's 100 percent sure so it's a privilege to be able to see it and at the same time we're going to see young riders. Susan Fitzpatrick being one, Peter Maloney, another one, um, Emmerich George, another one. We're going to see young riders as well, Holly Smith, that are that are trying to make a name, trying to establish themselves, and they get a great opportunity here to be amongst riders that are normally going from five star to five star. Well, we look towards the end of the jump off. Eric van der Fluten, Holly Smith, and then the final one to go for the United States of America will be Laura Kraut. The jump off course, well, the 60 seconds is the time allowed. of eight obstacles and nine jumping efforts. So before we go with the jump off, Alan caught up with the course designer. We're here with man of the moment, Javier Tenor, course builder of this invitation to Longines Grand Prix. Javier, congratulations. You have 11 horses in the jump off, a, a dream position now. What do you feel about the jump off? Who do you feel yes. is likely to... The first round has been okay for me, yes. 11 clears, uh, three with time for all, no, and in the jump off, uh, there are 11 starters, no, I think, they win the, the, the best, no, I think it's fair. But uh, the, 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 the rider was uh, choose 
the, the, the right way to do and, and clear. Yeah? You know? Great. Well, listen, uh, not too much from uh, Javier here for tipping, but uh, well done, and uh, we hope for a very good jump off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, great to see uh, both of you in, in action here. And uh, here we go. The first one to go in the, the Invitational Longines Grand Prix. The final event here at Fougere de la Frontière. Yeah, and we start here with uh, Mato Ribas. He, he had an eventful uh, first round. It was clear, but he had uh, plenty of work uh, to get it. Uh, quite a character, um, Mato Ribas. He's, uh, he's based in Holland, actually, together with uh, Katie King. And um, was in the Olympics, uh, was in the London Olympics and rode a horse called Wilexo. And uh, obviously, this is a horse that he only got recently and uh, with whom he's hoping again to to maybe be on the Brazilian team and uh, get himself for Tokyo if they qualify. Well, Jala is a 10-year-old mare by El Dorado. I will go around the course, fence one, the same fences in the first round. So one and two, it's committed as the same as the other seven strides. Then turning back, the, what was a triple bar is now an oxer, it's a square oxer. And then you have again this uh, this angle. Now it's the second, the second and the third part of the combination. Took a ten strides there to it, then turning to the to the right. And here there's a there's a vertical, and there you have a very tight. If one gallops too much to the vertical, one gets drawn far away and loses time to get back to turn back to the oxer. Coming down to the Massimo Dutti vertical here, and then it's a tight turn. Lost a shoe, slipped and lost a shoe, tied back uh, to the last fence. He's coming in in 48.8 and a clear. Well, uh, that sets the standard. Will it be fast enough? Well, uh, another 10 competitors left to go, but he is clear. So, uh, Carlos Ribas, uh, clear there. It was fast. Uh, I, I would say the only place where, there's two places where maybe um, one could do better. It's possible that one can be quicker from the Oxford, the second uh, or the third fence to the double that was the triple that's the double uh, he did in 10 strides there might be a possibility to, to be quicker there and then uh, from the green vertical to the red oxer if one just gets a little deeper in the green oxer uh, green vertical one might be able to turn quicker uh, and with, with them. but it's fast and it definitely puts pressure on the rest so we're going to uh, France now Emmerich George goes with Chopin. There's an 11 year old gelding by Radko. Yeah, um, he's, uh, he's been very consistent, Emmerich. Uh, had a couple of fences down here and there, but uh, he's been consistently good and uh, been in a lot of the jump offs and the preparation classes as well. Okay. So here he, he comes on an angle. Again, he did it in 10. Sort of weighted oh. that fence down. So he's he's going for getting in deep and then turning tighter. Although he's not going that tight there. But it is an auction, so one one has to be careful just to make sure to make the width. And it's very square. It is square. And now he's going up a gear again. He's going to be hoping for a slightly. Oops, that's another one down. So he's down two. He's blowing coming, his chances. Coming home, yeah, coming home on eight and slower as well than uh, Mata Ribas, but in fairness he slowed down probably after he had the first fence down, so he's coming on 8. 8 faults, uh, 49.76 there for Emmerich Georges for France, into a second place provisionally. So another 9 competitors to go. Brazil lead this early stages. The, the disappointment of having fences done, but there is another day. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now next, uh, next in the ring um, is for the UK, Christopher Fraser. Uh, Christopher has been clear in the first round a lot of the time. Uh, this is a very consistent horse, great trier, careful. Sometimes in the jump off, he's he's just maybe had a 
a fence down, but uh, this, goes, this course just could suit him. Cassandra is a nine-year-old by Quintero. Quintero stands with the Stallion Company. I think uh, it looks like Christopher is, is just trying to go clear. He's, he's not trying to make the time there. He's, uh, he's well down on, uh, on the other riders. Uh, making so sure to take, take enough space for being able to make the width of the Oxer here. Horse tries. Great try of the horse. Oh, get this vertical out of the way. Ah! Took it down in front. So hold it on the four faults. Could uh, give him some nice prize money. Yeah, and a good job over the final one. Four faults, 53-02. So, uh, because into the second place at this early stage. Still some big guns uh, left to go. Yeah, it'd be... Um it's a pity for Christopher having chosen to just go for a nice, steady, clear round and then to still have a fence down. It, uh, it's just going to leave him a little bit lower in the, in the prize money than what he would have hoped for. But the horse, um, as mentioned, the horse has been very consistent. And uh, before this show, he went to a show in France where he went through the car and actually he, did, he won a class, was second in the class, third in the class. So this is a nice horse. Now, this is... Uh, a very exciting uh, combination in the ring now. Susan Fitzpatrick for Ireland. She goes with fellow Castlefield. This is a nine-year-old by Jatem Flamenco, owned by our mum Sharon. That's right. This, uh, this horse jumped absolutely out of its skin the first round. Uh, Susan is, uh, is competitive. She, she won a Grand Prix in Mill Street, a two-star, and uh, she was second in the Mullingar Grand Prix. She, she also was ninth in the Grand Prix in Villa Mora, so she's plenty competitive. This is a really, a really nice horse as well. She's a former European medalist. Now, can this uh, be your first? She's up. She's up there. She's up. Now, we need to keep coming. That time to beat, uh, 48 8 Needs to keep galloping to the final one. Here we go. Can she give it a big clear? Yes, a great round. Look at the time. 47.52. That's into the lead there for Susan Fitzpatrick. Her fellow Castlefield. That's a great round. Great round. One and a half seconds. It's, a, it's not going to be an easy, ground, easy round to, uh, to beat. Very, very well ridden. Very stylish. But she was on the money all the way around. Look at the height over to Zuki Oxer. Eye on for the next fence. Great over that one meter sixty vertical. And there we can see Michael Blake and uh, all the team from Team Ireland here, keeping an eye on the Irish riders this weekend. We go to Switzerland now. This is Yannick Jordan. Yes, uh, Yannick. This this horse is a very sweet horse. Extremely clean. Extremely careful. Not the biggest horse. Not the rangiest horse. But. Uh, a rubber ball really jumps, uh, trained or helped anyway by uh, Neil Talbot and uh, jumped a very, very nice uh, first round. So an 11-year-old gelding by Contego. Nice. I think his ground speed might be a little bit, uh, a little bit down on uh, Susan, but... Uh, He's fast and he's efficient, the horse. Very, very balanced. Just a little rub there. Yeah, the time to beat 47.52. Not close enough. Uh, 49.45. So that'll go into second place. Actually, it'll only be good enough for third place at the moment. That's a nice horse, a nice combination. They'll they'll jump a lot of clears uh, this season. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a name I hadn't uh, seen a lot, but um, he, he was he was there last week as well. Very very effective uh, little horse, very sweet horse. The Swiss are great at finding really nice horses. Yes, it's not easy to import a horse in Switzerland, and uh, they have a system where. So the dealers have to get have a license to bring them in, and therefore the quality of horses going into Switzerland is uh, is high. Now we go for Ireland once again. This is Peter Maloney. He goes with the 14-year-old mare, Arnelia. This one owned by Team Harmony. 
and a winner two weeks ago of, uh, of the Grand Prix. So a lot of pressure on uh, Peter. Yes, a new combination. This one uh, formerly partnered by the legendary John Whitaker. Yeah, and um, this is the first show for Peter with this mare. So tight turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Leaving it, he's leaving. He's left a stride there. That that should give him an advantage. He's he's quick. He'd be quicker to there. Over the vertical. Bit sure for the vertical. Mare can sometimes get a little low over our verticals. Good right. there. This is on. He's fast. He's fast. Get this vertical out of the way and then gallop to the final one. 47.52. Look at the time. Well up on the clock. Needs to keep the final one up. Yeah! Great round there. 47.07. That's our new leader. Peter Maloney, he's in the lead at the moment. 47.08. Great round. And certainly that stride out down to the, the double or the combination certainly helped him there. It definitely, it definitely did help. It definitely did help because she's a mare that he had to take a little bit care of her out verticals, the green vertical there. He couldn't go flat out to that because sometimes she can just get a little bit low over verticals and uh, it worked beautifully. A, a wonderful round, wonderful round. It's great to see the mare, mare really trying and loving it. Well, Ireland 1-2 at the moment. As we go to Sweden now. This could be the big danger in this class. Very much the big danger. He's here to win and only to win. I mean, he's, uh, he is uh, a world medalist. So he's not here. He's just here. He wants to win. He has to win this. Frederick Gonson now goes with 11-year-old gelding cold play. That time 47-08 and clear. It's a lovely, a lovely horse, beautiful type. Peter was quicker already and he's after slipping there as well. He slipped badly and he's not, he's not getting them back balanced. Ooh, that's unfortunate. That's no, a that's pity. A, yeah, that's a, that's a real bad day at the office for for this combination. They were waiting there. They've, they've been very careful not to overuse the horse the whole the whole show. This was this was their target and, they, and the, the way the horse jumped the first round, he was on target. Well, you can see now he's just come back, taking it easy, getting the horse uh, regrouped. And just uh, roll on down to this vertical and then the final oxer. Yeah, and it's, it's difficult to get into this Swedish team. I mean, uh, they have the top, the top is really performing very high. So hard luck there, very, very hard luck. And, uh, yeah, so the four faults, 56.87. So we'll drop him right down the leaderboard. Peter Maloney for Ireland leads at the moment. Susan Fitzpatrick for Ireland in second. And uh, Carlos uh, Ribas for Brazil in third place. So four left to go now in the Grand Prix. Yes, it's um, and an interesting four we have, uh, especially from, uh, from an Irish point of view and even more from... Uh, a Condon point of view because um, we've two cousins that are competing against each other it's, uh, <laughs> Anthony Condon how he he goes with the Hales' stallion SFS Aristo this one by Arco at this level it, it, uh, it's unusual of course not so much when the Whitakers have so many of them but uh, uh, this is uh, this is great and he's going for it and I would say somebody told him about the nine strides. Yep. Perfect. So he got that as well. So I think he's he's about the same. He's, well, he's, he's definitely daring him to the vertical. He's not uh, putting on the handbrake for that one. But then he's got wide there. He did go wide because the horse jumped very generously and it went wide. So I think it's kind of balanced off. It's very tight. It's too tight to call. It's no. too tight to call. Gets this vertical out of the way. Oh, we are on now. 47.08 is the time to beat. Here we go. The final fence. It's not going to be far away, is it? On the money. 47.20. Into second place there. That is marginally close. But some round from Anthony Condon. Foot perfect all the way round. Sure is. And it's a 1-2-3 for Ireland right now. 
which is uh, pretty impressive. So really coming back round after the big vertical, coming back round, possibly lost it there. Yes, yeah, most probably, yes, for sure. It By taking a chance on the... It, you might to make a cho choice out of two things, either waiting to get a deep stride in the, in the green and then turning tight or then take, having a risk that the horse landed a little bit long and kept rolling uh, and drifting a little bit in the sterns. That's what cost him. But still, great performance. And so, of course, Peter Maloney didn't leave too much. No, no, definitely not. It is all very tight as we go to Eric van der Fluten now. He goes for the Netherlands. So, Eric here, it'll be interesting to see whether he, whether he tries to beat it or whether he just goes for, for a nice clear. What do you think he's going to do? Uh, I, I have a feeling he's just going to be a little conservative here. This mare, if he saw the other rounds, it must be see that it's unlikely to be able to make those times. This is a big mare. Ooh, he was lucky there, he nearly had the same kind of shot that uh, Janssen had with Coldplay. Very good. Jumping very that. well, jumping very well. Shoulders are up. The mayor covers a lot of ground, but he isn't going anywhere the speed of Peter Maloney or Anthony Condon. No, and too much balancing to be doing. Still, if he can keep a nice, clean round, he'll be well up in the prize money. Ah, that vertical, that's caught out a few of them in this jump off. Yeah, she never really tried behind there. So, uh, just the one fence down, four faults, 49.92. And it was an economic, he didn't go flat out, but he, he went sharp enough and he took uh, turns. And you can see the time. I don't think they've left too much there, the two boys. But of course, with who's coming next, uh, you wouldn't be too brave to say that. Definitely not. We're getting down to the final couple in this, the Longines Invitational Grand Prix. What great sport we've had here on the Spanish Sunshine Tour. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Yeah. Holly Smith for Great Britain. The two left, actually, yeah. She goes with Heart's Destiny. They were a big winner uh, a week ago. Yeah, she had a taste, so she's uh, she's definitely not going to give it away. Ten-year-old by Heart Trop. really a jump off where every question is asked you'll be able to turn scope careful and fast there isn't a big long gallop uh, to last fence what what sometimes see nowadays it's, uh, it's a lot of thinking to be doing here steadies up for that vertical and comes That's at the, the angle highest tightest turn back to this uh, of anybody wow. she's I, I think she's up there now, here we go. Two more fences left to go. 47.07. Get this vertical out of the way. Yeah. Now, down to the final fence. We're on target to beat the time. Can we keep the final one up? Here we go. Ah, the final one went. Look at the time. 46.14. That was a costly four falls for her, but she had to do it. She, she had to do it. And uh, very unlucky. A great try. A great try. And uh, she very much... Uh, won it there on the the turn back on the turn back after the the, the green knock so that was a marvellous uh, marvellous line that she took there the horse let her down at that final fence really yeah yeah you could say you could say that you could say that but it's a big horse and there's a lot of twisting and turning but uh, yes I mean from the angle that we're sitting here we, we, we can't really see that uh, there was any rider error there that's for sure well, only one rider left to go. One rider that can deny a whitewash for the Irish here in Spain. And uh, one very dangerous lady against the clock. Laura Kreit now for United States of America. Can she do it, Alan? She can, but it's it's not simple. It's not the ideal, ideal horse to be doing that because it's very twisty turning. Get that turn out of the way. She did it in 10. She couldn't chance to just leave one out there and 10 strides. So she's down there on the on the two boys. But if she gets a good turn here... She has which she's not. Which she's not. It's, uh, it's a little wide. 
I don't think she's fast enough. She's not fast enough at this stage. Not a million miles away. It all depends how brave she is to the final one. No. 47 zero eight. Here we go. The final fence. Great round. Not fast enough. 49-23. So that'll be good enough for uh, fifth place. But it does confirm a win for Peter Maloney. He rides Team Harmonies. Ornella to win the Grand Prix here. A second goes to Anthony Condon and third to Susan Fitzpatrick. It's a 1-2-3 for the Irish with uh, Carlos Ribas for Brazil taking fourth. Laura Kraut for United States of America in fifth. And uh, Yannicka Joran for Switzerland taking sixth. Yes, it's a great result, great result. It's uh, for the anoraks, the breeding anoraks, it's... Uh it's a great week as well for, for the mare to win. The mare was bought as a yearling by Princess Hyatt. She's out of a granddaughter of Fine Sarah. Fine Sarah that passed away was not so far away from here in the World Equestrian Games. Uh, came to fame with Peter Wilde and it's her granddaughter here. 2002 that happened. So 17 years later, the granddaughter of the mare comes and uh, wins this Grand Prix here about 100 miles away from uh, Caress. Also, it's a great week for uh, Peter Maloney. He also gets a new horse bought for him by Princess Hyatt to help the Irish team in their quest, hopefully, to get that qualification for the Olympic Games. There's plenty of hope there, and uh, Peter is a great, great guy, great rider, wonderful rider. Uh, Kean, uh, Kean O'Connor is uh, giving him a lot of help at the moment, and uh, it all looks great. Well, Mr. Blasquez, the president here of the Spanish Sunshine Tour, on hand there for the presentation. Well, after the class, Peter Maloney caught up with the commentator, Eamon McGowan. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage again is Peter Maloney from Ireland, and he's just won the four-star Longines Grand Prix on the final day of the Sunshine Tour. Peter, here we are again. Yeah, um, pretty surprised to be back, to be honest, but um, the mayor gave everything today, and it really gave everything. I was pretty tight to the time in the first round, but we got away with it, but we really made sure in the second round, and I got the win, thank God. And I was just going to ask you, Peter, did you think three weeks ago when you won the other four-star Grand Prix, you'd be stood here today? Uh, definitely not. I didn't think I'd win the first one, to be honest. It's only a new partnership with the mayor and just a testament how good the mayor is, you know, that, and we've gelled pretty quick and I just really can't believe it, to be honest, you know. And Peter, Orna Laya, owned by Team Harmony and Princess Aya, they've been great supporters of yours, haven't they? Um, fantastic. Without them, there's no chance I would be here, you know. Um, really must thank Princess Aya for having to trust in me for these good horses, you know, and give me this chance. And thank God we were able to prove it there this this tour now. And Peter, talking about the jump off here today, what did you find difficult? The jump off, um, I was a little bit worried to the double. Everyone before me had gone ten, we had walked at nine, but I got a really good shot to the third fence, landed inside, got to nine, lovely. And I think that was probably the winning of it there. I think, you know. And the last six weeks. It's been it's been a long time, but it's gone very quickly. Tell me about your best part. Uh, I think this this by far is the best part. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, look, I mean, with six weeks here, with eleven horses, like we've got so much work done here in six weeks. We found out what horses were. You know, we've got time to gel with this mare. Um, you know, we're really set up now to go on for the year now. Looking at the results, you've won thirty six thousand four hundred and twenty five euro. That's some payday. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's my biggest by far now. I think um, that was my first four star. I probably only jumped one four star before this tour. I think so. This is probably my third one. So it's nice to get two wins and out of out of three. Talk to me about the plan very quickly before we go. The plan for the rest of the year, very briefly. Um, look, we just go home now. Um, we have a little break with these horses. Just get everything right again. Um, this may probably be aimed at some more classes like this, you know, these four-star shows, and we're not going to use her every week, just that kind of stuff. Um, and we have some other younger ones developing in them, and, uh, you know, please God, we'll just work away throughout the summer now, and hopefully it goes well. Well, Peter Maloney and Team Harmonies, Orna Laya, winners of the Longines Grand Prix here on the final week and final day. Many congratulations, Mokara. Uh, cheers, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, from all the team and from Alan Storm and myself, till next time, bye-bye. Programa patrocinado por Longines.